Hello and welcome to Mal Makes. Today we're going to be painting Bonneton from Super Mario Odyssey. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. This part of the game is heavily influenced by London, and I think they did a really good job of it. And because of that, I was looking up old images of London and I found this gorgeous photograph of the Westminster Bridge um, with Big Ben and the Palace of Westminster in the background, and it's all shrouded in this fog. And it's really a gorgeous image with the composition. So I tried to kind of force that perspective here on Bonneton. And I kind of put everything in place to kind of force it to look that same way for that perspective. Um, now this is shaded in grayscale in my sketch here, but I am going to have it be in color. And I know this area of the game is pretty much grayscale, but there is hints of color in everything. And I don't want it to be just a solid monochromatic piece with a giant yellow moon in the background. So everything's going to have kind of hints of color, like the fog is kind of bluish, the sky is slightly bluish, um, there's a lot of blue actually, but everything is going to just have a slight hint of color but still be very gray. Now the first thing I have to do is paint my sky, but because I have this transition where it kind of fades from like a lighter gray into a darker gray, I need to draw everything in first to get the right size of the moon, the right size of the bridge, exactly where my horizon line is going to be, just to kind of figure out exactly where this fade from the light gray to the dark gray is going to be. I've sketched in everything kind of roughly here, and the only thing that's going to stay the same is the horizon and the moon. Everything else is just kind of a light sketch to see where it's going to go. Now I've drawn in some concentric circles around the moon to help me figure out exactly where the glow is going to go and the curve of that. So I'm going to start by filling that in. I have a dark navy blue here. And how I made it is I made a dark gray with white and black, and then separately I mixed up some cyan and some orange to kind of tone down the brightness of that cyan because it's really, really blue. So it's more of a navy color. And then I took that and mixed it into my dark gray. So there's just a hint of blue in this. And I'm going to start from the outside this time, and I'm going to fill in this dark blue and then work my way towards a lighter blue, lighter gray blue towards the center. I did this first layer of blending and it turned out pretty good. There's a few places where it's a bit dark in here, um, where it's not a nice smooth transition between all my colors. I also think it's a little dark overall because I'm worried about these buildings showing up here in this part where it's darker. So I'm going to go and do it again, but kind of try and make it lighter and keep the transition smooth. I used a compass to draw in the circle for the moon, and I'm filling it in white first, just because I want that white to kind of be a barrier between the gray and the yellow that's going to sit on top. I don't want that yellow kind of mixing into that gray and turning it into a muddy, almost green color, so I'm kind of using that white there to kind of separate the two physically with a different color of paint. The moon is all primed, so I'm going to take some chalk pastel and start to draw in where all the craters, the highlights, anything that I need to know where it is on the moon, I'm going to draw all that in. And I'm going to take some light yellow and some white to kind of start to fill in the highlights and just bring a little bit of kind of like a yellow orange in for the shadows.
So the skyline kind of starts small and then gets bigger towards the edges. Also, this first row is totally solid silhouette black, and then after that dries, I can start to draw in some of these darker gray ones that start to kind of crop up here on this side until we get to some bigger ones that have full detail over on the edges. But I need to do them all in solid black first. In front of the cityscape is some clouds. Now there is some in front of the closer buildings, but I want to kind of have some in between too, so I have a nice little bit of mist in between these different layers. So I'm using a light gray mixed with some glazing liquid to start to bring this in from the bottom. And I'm just going to lay it down very softly and blend it up here until it's nice and soft. I've drawn in the rest of the skyline, and all of this is pretty gray. Now it's a little bit more brown or like a warm gray compared to the one I have here so far. So I've just mixed a little bit of burnt umber into the black so that as I make my colors lighter for the various buildings, it'll just be a little bit warmer um, compared to this gray here. The cityscape is done, and I've done all my windows, everything in gray. And a couple of these windows have lights on, so I'm just taking some of my moon colors, and I'm going to add them to a couple of these windows. With that all done, I can start to add this final layer of fog on these buildings back here. So I'm going to draw myself in a chalk line of where I want it to kind of actually go up on top of these buildings. And then I'm going to paint downwards, doing some of these same whites and blue grays into the rest of the piece, just to cover it all with that fog. I'm going to make a lot of that paint just so I can save some for later to kind of cover up the base of the bridge and the base of the tower and all of the pieces. But I want to kind of give it a good layer first, just to kind of fill everything in. Now, once that's dry, I can water it down with some glazing liquid and I can kind of bring a little bit of it on top of these buildings, just like I did these ones back here to kind of make it look like there's a transparent layer of fog on top. But for now, I just kind of want to do a solid base just to kind of even up all of this mess down here. This turned out really good, and I still have a lot of these same colors on my palette, so I can always mix up more um, to kind of cover the bases down here. I could also do what I'm going to do next on these um, closer building, where I bring in a little bit of the fog up here. First, I need to get rid of all of that extra chalk. So I just have a wet towel, and I'm going to kind of just lightly scrub at all of the chalk to get it erased. Now, all of this needs to be very dry before I do this, so I've let it dry quite a bit. So I don't have to worry about anything coming off on the towel and not being on the canvas anymore. So I can just get rid of all of it and be a little harsh on my scrubbing. I'm taking this glazing liquid and mixing it with just a very, very light gray. It's mostly white with just a touch of gray, so it's not so bright. And I'm just using a lot of the glazing liquid. It's better to be too transparent because you can always add more, but you can't take away once it's on the canvas. So I'm just very lightly brushing it on top, blending it down into the rest of the fog here, and then I can go over here and do the same thing.
I was struggling drawing in the bridge. Um, I drew it a few times and wasn't happy with the perspective, but I really liked the tower. So I'm just going to do the tower first, and then once that's dry, I can try and work in the bridge over here. Now the cap is going to be black, of course, but the tower itself is going to be white. And I can't just do like a solid white because of the way the moon is, the highlight is coming from behind the tower. So all of the edges are going to be light in color and get towards a shadow in the middle. And the same with down here, these edges are gonna be pure titanium white and then fade into a gray towards the middle. This bridge took me a long time to draw, and I wanted to go over um, where I kind of got tripped up on some things and how I overcame that in order to help you guys figure out drawing a curved bridge in one point perspective. So the first thing I did was draw in these two platforms in the door over here. Now that's not based on the one point perspective, I just drew two ellipses, which are the top parts, and kind of just drew them into cylinders by drawing vertical lines. Now that did take a little bit of time, um, I just kept drawing them until I was happy with how it looked, and then I left it alone because I thought it looked good. So once that part was done and cemented and I was happy with it, I could work on this crazy bridge. And the first thing I had to decide for it was where this vanishing point was going to be. Now I didn't really base this on a whole lot, I kind of just started drawing a little bit like a light sketch, and then I kind of figured out, well if they're all kind of here, it's going to be somewhere out here. So I kind of made that point and stuck with it. Then I had to decide where the bridge is going to touch this platform and how wide that bridge is going to be at that point. So I decided I wanted the bridge to be here on the right side. And then I wanted it to be here for how wide it was going to be, how deep in space the bridge was. So I took both of those two points, this top right of the bridge and the top left of the bridge, lined them up with my vanishing point, and then I got this line here and then the far line back here. That gave me the depth of the bridge right there. I could then drop vertical lines down um, onto where I hit the bottom of this platform, and then I could line up those two dots with my vanishing point and get this outside part of the bridge, and then the inside part here you don't see. Because of that, that's dictating how wide the bridge is through the entire thing. These orthogonals get further apart the further away from the vanishing point they get, so the bridge is getting wider the closer it's getting to us. And that's what's determining that, is where the vanishing point is and where these two dots are. They're starting this big, and they're getting this big, and then bigger, and then bigger off the canvas. That helped me draw in these arches. Um, I just kind of followed this down and then drew my half circle here. Um, and then in order to get that right, because I wasn't happy with it, sometimes I find that it helps if I draw the inside part to make it a 3D shape. I know I don't see this line right here, but because I drew that in, it helped me figure out exactly where it's going to cross this line where I see the underside of the bridge here. That helped me figure that part out. Because I have this other orthogonal, I could figure out exactly where it was going to come down and stop, and then just draw a horizontal line right here. I could do the same over here, but because it's on the corner of the canvas, that one was a little bit trickier. And I sketched it in, wasn't happy with it, and I've kind of been like fiddling around and making sure my lines look right and I'm happy with it. But this one was a lot easier because I had all of these extra lines on it. 
Now, because I had all that done, I could work on the top of the bridge. So I started by um, drawing my line about here compared to the arch here. And I thought it looked nice and I was happy with it, but I didn't think it was curvy enough. It wasn't really this big roller coaster that this bridge is. So then I moved up the line and moved up the line and moved up the line until I thought it had this nice curve to it. And then I was a lot happier with where that was. And then I just kind of connected it down into this orthogonal I have here and then just curved it this way off the canvas, which just leaves this top part here where like Mario would run up the hill. That part I drew in right about where this line was and I thought it looked nice. It looked dainty and like small on the canvas and then I realized how wide the bridge is underneath here, how big this space is between these two orthogonals and I figured it should be that wide up here. So I measured how big this was down here and then I measured up here and that gave me a good idea of how far this line needed to be out from this line in order to get this right. So then I could sketch this in and draw until I was happy with it. Um, so that's kind of how I came about drawing this bridge. Now the tip I have for you is to draw the part you don't see. Draw the back side of the bridge where um, you would see like the back of the platform here so you know what it looks like from the underside. And you can kind of see where the line should go and how everything should be as if it were transparent even though later when you paint it, you won't see all those. But now that all of this is drawn in, I can take a towel um, with a little bit of water on it and kind of clean up all of my lines. I don't need all of these transparent ones here. In fact, the chalk is gonna kind of stain my white paint for where the bridge is going to be lighter and it's gonna end up kind of gray even though I want it to be white. So I'm just going to erase all of the parts of the bridge you shouldn't be able to see in the final version just to get rid of all of this extra chalk and kind of help me out for painting. The next thing to do is give everything kind of a base layer. Now the part of the bridge that's here, the face of the bridge that's facing us, is going to be a darker gray. The moon is our light source and that's back there. So this side is going to be darker and the top will be a little bit lighter, especially towards this edge here. But because the fog is reflective, um, all of that water vapor in the air reflects light, the moonlight is going to bounce off the fog and then bounce up onto the underside of the bridge. So these parts are actually going to be a bit lighter. But I just want to block everything in first to kind of cement all my lines down, let it dry, get rid of all this extra chalk, and then I can start to do some value where I make it a bit lighter up here where the moon is hitting it and a bit darker where it's in the shadow of the tower. With all of this dry, I could erase all of that extra chalk I had for the bridge. I did leave this line because it's where the fog is going to come up on the tower, how tall it's going to be there, uh, because I had drawn too far down and filled it in. Um, I also drew in the shadows for the tower and the bridge because the moon is our light source. It's going to cast light on the back of the tower and that's going to cast a shadow here on this fog. So I've drawn it in and I did a few tests. I used one of my paint markers and a flashlight to kind of represent the tower and then I used an eraser to kind of represent this bridge coming off so I can kind of see if the light source is off to the side exactly where it crosses here on this bridge. So because of doing that little mini test, I was able to kind of figure out exactly where I want the shadow to go and how it's going to go this direction. Now I'm just leaving this for now. I'm not going to work on it yet, um, but I wanted to get that in here first before I worked on some of this because I needed to know where this tiny line is to make all of this part in shadow.
I've been going piece by piece for all of this and doing value. So like I started up here and did value on this and then I did value on the top and then value on this vertical surface. So like itty bitty parts and kind of breaking it down into manageable chunks. That's the important thing. And try not to think about the entire piece all at once. Try and break it down into little pieces. So the next little piece I have to do is the face of the bridge right here. I think it's too dark, um, keeping in mind that it's the same sort of texture as the tower. And if it's getting this dark here on the tower, I don't think it should be as dark as I have it right here. So I'm going to lighten it up and it's going to be a bit lighter over here because I still have the moon bouncing the light off the fog and reflecting back onto the side. But because this part here is also in shadow from the tower, I'm going to keep it a little bit darker here and just kind of get lighter the further left I go. The way I did these shadows is I took some of the same colors I had for the fog, the blue and the gray, and just used more of the dark gray and more of the blue to kind of fill in here first and then soften it as I got towards the edges of the canvas and the edges of where the shadow goes. Now I need to fill in these rails and do those with value too. For example, they're going to be darker on this side because it's kind of on the back side of this arch and lighter here on the base where the moon is hitting it directly. I did the texture on top of the grass here um, just by using a lighter gray and kind of doing this little um, back and forth pattern with these straight lines. Now after that's all dry I can work on the railing that sits along the entire length of the bridge but I want to let that dry and I want to make sure I start to get the fog here for this transition just like this one back here just so that can start drying. I used chalk to draw in the railing and I'm going to be using the liquid black to fill in all of the lines here and I've only drawn the main ones that I want to get in first and then I can start to do in the little ones in between. Now I'm doing the far away one first and once that dries I can draw in the closer one. Because they kind of overlap in parts it's going to get a little bit confusing so I want to do one first and then do the second one. Now I had drawn in um, the building that's kind of hiding down here in the sign and I'm not sure I really want to put those in. Now that it's to where it is in the painting, I feel like it might start to clutter up the image. So I'm going to finish the rail first and then once it's done decide if I want any of the extra things. Put in the light post right here just using some black and some of my same moon colors to bring in some gold. But now that these railings are done, um, because they are just a solid flat black, they look really flat. They don't have any dimension to them and they kind of seem out of place. So I'm just going to use some of my darker grays to give them a little bit of a highlight just to give them some dimension. And we're done! We have Bonnetin from Super Mario Odyssey. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster, or a phone case, or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.